In the last video, we took a look at the digestive system and we said its main job was to break down food into usable macromolecules, things like carbohydrates, carbs for short, lipids, which are just fats, and proteins. And it absorbs these and we said that it was so good at absorbing things because of things like villi and microvilli. And that's what we will talk about in this video, so villi and microvilli. And villi and microvilli simply line the small intestine. And this region right over here that I'm boxing in, this whole region, is the small intestine. And if we took a look at what the inside of the small intestine looks like, it's going to look something like this. There's going to be a lot of finger-like projections all throughout. And these are going to be called the villi. And on top of each of the villi, there's even more finger-like, hair-like projections at this point. They're so fine and so small. Tons of these all over the place. These are going to be the microvilli. So a single one of these is called a villus. So this over here, this is a villus. One of the finger, bigger finger-like projections. And then this little hair-like structures on top of the villus. This is microvillus. And over here, this space inside here is lumen. And that's where the macromolecules are going to pass through. And I just want to look at a more in-depth in view of what each villus looks like. So down here, there's a picture of what the inside of your small intestine might look like. And that is a picture of villi. So one of these, so right here, this right here would be considered a villus. This is one of them. So that over here. And this is what allows our digestive system, mainly our small intestine, to absorb so much of these nutrients. This is where 90% of the nutrients are absorbed. And it's large in part, and it's just largely due to the amount of villi and microvilli, and there's so much inside. So if we were to blow one of these up and take a look at a single one of these, it's going to have a layer like this, and this is going to be a villus. And then in the middle here, it's going to have what's called a central lacteal. So this is going to be your central lacteal. Lacteal. And this is part of the lymphatic system. And inside of our lumen, like we said earlier, there's going to be a ton of little fat molecules that are going to be broken down and emulsified. So these are fats. And they're going to enter inside the central lacteal and then be pumped into circulation. And of course, the lymphatic system takes excess fluid pumped out of circulatory system and puts it back into circulation. So if you are not familiar with the lymphatic system, I encourage you to go watch those videos. And another thing, another important thing is the fats first have to pass through a ton of these little guys up here. And these are going to be cells that are going to sit on top of each villus. And these are going to be called enterocytes. And on top of these enterocytes, that's where you're going to have the hair-like projections coming off in the microvilli. So the microvilli are up here as well. And you can see how much they increase the surface area. So these are selective and the fats are going to have to pass through them into the central lacteal and out into circulation. So in addition to the central lacteal, we're also going to have capillary beds and blood vessels that are going to come up and surround it just like this. It looks something like that. It's a very rough sketch. but So they're going to go around like that and then you're going to have some veins come through and they're going to work together and these are going to take all of the proteins and the carbohydrates and they're going to put them back this way and they're going to go back into circulation so out here you, you're going to have a ton of these little proteins and carbohydrates sitting so we'll just call them proteins and carbs and they are going to go through here back into the circulatory system through these blood vessels that are inside the small little villus. So there's a lot going on inside each villus. 
And I just want you to understand that, okay, our digestive system, it's done its job, you know, it's mixing all of our food with the different sort of enzymes to break them down into their smaller parts, the fats, proteins, and carbs that our body can use, but it's not done, you know, it has to go into the central lacteal and these blood vessels to go back into circulation so our body can use it, because we know the circulatory system is responsible for distributing the nutrients around the body. So it's a very neat thing, a very neat process. Another reason that the small intestine is so good at what it does in absorbing all these nutrients is how long it is. It gives it so much time to come in contact with the villi and microvilli. On average, it's about 18 to 23 feet long. And that is a, that's pretty crazy if you think about it. I mean, you're running a significant distance down to first base if you're a baseball fan you know I mean you're about a third of the way there and I just that is really really crazy to me that you know our bodies you know the structure and the function are so intimately related and that's what's going to come up a lot in anatomy and physiology classes especially at the baccalaureate level is they're going to ask you well hey you know the digestive system um, how is its structure related to its function? And they're going to talk about this with the, with the cardiovascular system, you know, things like that. But you can just say, hey, well, you know, the structure, well, these villi and microvilli, you could say, if this were just a smooth tube running through your body and it didn't have these villi and microvilli, it would have a total surface area to absorb these nutrients of about 3.6 feet squared. But because the villi and microvilli, and this is a really, really crazy thing that I read in a textbook, they're going to have a total surface area now of about 2,200 feet squared. I mean, just think about that for a minute. That's enough, that's enough for a small, for a decent sized four bedroom home. And now you can see why 90% of the nutrients are absorbed here because of all the surface area. So if they ever say, hey, how are the structure and function related for the digestive system? You can say, well, hey, the small intestine, it's so long that gives it enough time to absorb all these nutrients. And in addition to that, there's a lot of finger-like projections. You have these villi and microvilli throughout the small intestine. That's what's going to allow it to absorb all these fats, proteins, and carbs. And so I just wanted to sort of show you more or less how the small intestine works and how it actually absorbs all of these macromolecules. So in the next video, we'll take a look at the accessory organs. We'll take a look at the pancreas, the gallbladder, as well as the liver and see how they assist in the absorbing of all these macromolecules.